Okay, students. Today we are having unit number four, and its name is Living Things and Their Environment. We will discuss in this chapter about the environment and how the living things they are adapting in their environment. Students, you know everything on the earth is either living or non-living. The non-living part of the earth is made up of the rocks and the soil and uh, the air or water and the living part is made up of plants and animals. Okay, the objective of this uh, chapter is to know the importance of the environment and the adaptation of living things to their environment. First we will discuss what is environment. Uh, all those things that are around an organism, around an organism and uh, which affect the way of life of the organisms or the living things that is called its environment. So in this environment the uh, living things are uh, living and they are uh, living their lives and they are adapted to different types of environment where they are living. Now there is another uh, terminology it is called as the biosphere. Biosphere. What is biosphere? So the part of the earth where living things are found. The part of the earth where living things are found that is called as the biosphere. So the biosphere contains all the important substances which living things need for their lives and that is the water, air, light, minerals and temperature etc. Okay, so now come towards the water. So as you know, the, the three quarters of the earth's surface, the three quarters of the earth's surface, it is covered with water. And it is in the form of oceans or lakes or rivers or ice caps, etc. And living things need this water because three quarters of the body of the living thing is made up of water. So the water is very important substance for the living things to live in the biosphere. Then comes the air. As you know, the air, the living things, uh, about one-fifth of the air, it is uh, occupied by a gas which is called as the oxygen. And you know oxygen is very important for the breathing of us or our living things. We are inhaling in the oxygen and exhaling out the carbon dioxide. So oxygen is in one fifth uh, percentage and carbon dioxide is found in very small amount. So uh, plants use carbon dioxide to make their food and, and uh, human beings and animals they take in oxygen from the air for their breathing. Then come the importance of light. As you know, the most important source of light on the earth is sun. The sun provides sunlight and energy for the living thing. Plants use that sunlight in the, for their uh, food preparation by the process of photosynthesis. And animals eat these plants and that can uh, so get energy indirectly from the plants. Now come towards the minerals. Minerals are found in the soil, you know it, and it helps the plants and animals to grow healthy and strong. So plants absorb these minerals from the soil with the help of their roots during the process of photosynthesis and prepare its food. And animals are eating that plants then and getting the energy indirectly. Okay, then is the temperature. So if a living thing is uh, living in a biosphere and the temperature is very important for it. Plants and animals need to live in a particular temperature. If the surrounding becomes too hot or too cold, so the animals or plants, living things, they may die. So they have to live in their suitable uh, temperature which its body is required. Now, come to, uh, towards the what animals eat. What animals eat. As you know, animals, they, uh, they are eating different kinds of food. They are eating the plants as well, they are eating the flesh of other animals as well and they are getting the energy. So uh, on the basis of that food, different kinds of food, the animals are divided into three different categories. That is the herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. Herbivores are those types of animals which eat only plants. They are dependent on their food for plants and they have a special teeth with the help of which they 
help them to chew the leaves and the grass. And the examples of the herbivores are rabbits, the cow, the horse, the sheep, etc. Now, what are carnivores? Carnivores are those types of animals which are eat only the meat or flesh of the other animals. These animals are called carnivores and they have special teeth and sharp claws for that which help them to grip and tear the flesh of the animals. And the examples of the carnivores are the lion and the tigers. Okay, then come towards the omnivores. Omnivores are those um, living things which are dependent on their food on the plants as well as on the flesh of the animals. And the examples of the animals are the hen, crow and we the human beings as well. We are eating the plants in the form of vegetables and fruits and we are eating the flesh of other animals in the form of chicken or beef or mutton etc. So these were the different kinds of categories of the animals that what type of food they are eating. Then uh, these, this food is actually providing the energy to the uh, human being and to all the living things. The green plants you know they are making its food by itself. So on the basis of that preparation of food, so the green plants are named as producers. What are green plants called? They are called producers because they are making their own food with the help of, uh, with the process of photosynthesis and that photosynthesis we are uh, required the carbon dioxide, the water, the sunlight, etc. So with the help of that photosynthesis, green plants make their food and get the energy. Now, the, you know, the animals and the human beings, we are not making our own food. So they, uh, humans and the animals, they are called as the consumers. They are called consumers because they obtain energy from the plants by eating them. They take the energy from the plants by eating them. And the third category, of that uh, living things they are called as decomposers. Decomposers are very microscopic organisms. They are found in the soil and they are dependent on their food on the dead bodies of plants and animals. So uh, the examples are the bacteria and fungi. So uh, they release the chemicals from the dead organisms in the soil and so help to keep the soil fertile. So this was all about the different categories of the living things and how they prepare food and on which food they are dependent. Now they come towards the food chain. As you know, food energy passes from the plants to the animals in the form of a long chain. In the form of a long chain. That chain is actually called as the food chain. It is uh, shown it to you here. As you know, the plants, they are preparing its own food, means they are called as producers. And how they are preparing its food, the ma major source of energy which it, it is taking for its photosynthesis, that is the sunlight. So the sunlight is giving energy to the plants. The plants are preparing its food in its leaves, in their leaves. That's why the leaves are called as the food factory. So in the leaves, the food is prepared by the plants. On that plants, some other small animals, they are dependent for their food. For example, you can take the example of a ladybird. Ladybird is a small insect which is, which is actually dependent on its food for the plants. This ladybird is actually eaten by uh, some another uh, large animals. You can take the example of some birds. So all this energy from the sun to the plants to the small animals to the large animals and so on, this form a chain and that is actually called as the food chain. Okay, now then we have another category uh, that is called as the food web. When this food chain, uh, the consumers, sometimes they are not dependent on the same food, they are dependent on the different types of foods. So sometimes two uh, different food chains, they are connected to each other and they form a complicated web type uh, structure. So that is actually called as the food web. You can uh, uh, see the example in your books as well that there are some uh, plants on which the grasshopper is also dependent on that uh, plants and some another animal as well. That grasshopper is eaten by the frog and that another animal for example the ladybird it is eaten by the bird so that frog is then eaten by the uh, eaten by the snake etc etc so such type of connection of more than uh, two uh, food chains they combine so they form a food web okay now 
another category in this chapter is adaptation you know all these living things they are living in different areas of the earth so the animals are adapted to its environment uh, for that adaptation they are having some special body parts or features in them so the special body parts that a plant or animal develop to adapt to a particular in place or living in condition that is called as the adaptation so now come towards the adaptation in animals so uh, animals uh, there are a lot of different animals which are adapted to their environment examples we can take uh, for example uh, an eagle it has a sharp beak an eagle has a sharp beak so that's why it can, it can easily catch its uh, food or it, it's mostly dependent on the uh, flesh so it can easily uh, prey its uh, animal with the help of its long sharp beak then as a tiger has the sharp claws and teeth tiger has a sharp claws and teeth to tear uh, to uh, catch its prey and tear the flesh or that thing and there is antlers uh, mountain uh, goat has hooves and uh, echidna has sharp needles to protect itself from the en enemies a fish swims with its fins and the tails in the water so th th these are such uh, examples of the uh, animals which are which have some body parts for its adaptation in its environment like a mosquito is uh, mouth is shaped like a needle to stab the stem of a plant or the skin of an animal uh, a giant and eater uses its strong claws to open the nest of ants and termites so a lot of there are uh, some more examples as well for uh, and every uh, living thing or animal it has its special body parts for its adaptation in its environment now animals that live in very cold places animals dot all those animals which are living in very cold places they have special body uh, features the most important is its fur on their bodies it has soft furs on their body which keep them warm and it has also it also have a thick layer of fats under their skin so these uh, both features uh, keeps them warm now the animals that live in very hot places so the animals that uh, are living in the hot places for you can take examples of camels and lizard so uh, the most important feature of their body is that uh, their body can store water for a long time and they can close their nostrils to keep out stains to keep out sand as they are living in the hot dry places so these two features help them to live there comfortably now the plants they are uh, adaptation in the plants the plants uh, mostly uh, you can ex take the example of a pine pine tree so the pine trees have needle like leaves so that needle like leaves actually help them to uh, retain the water in their bodies and, and uh, avoid uh, transpiration from the leaves and another example is the cactus which grows in very hot places and it can store water for a long time in their body so these uh, two features and apart from it a lot of other features help the plants to uh, adapt in their environment where they are living so this was all about the uh, animals living things and its adaptation to their environment Unit number four, living things and their environment. What is an environment? Everything on the earth is either living or non-living. The non-living part of the earth is made up of rock, soil, water, air, and sunlight. The living part is made up of plants and animals. Living things depend on each other as well as on non-living things for food, energy, support, and shelter. All those things that are around an organism and which affect its way of life are called its environment. This is the actual definition of environment. The number and types of animals and plants that live in a particular environment depends upon the amount of rain, sunshine and the temperature of that place. The shape of the land or landscape also affect living things. Animals and plants found at the top of mountains are different from those found on the plains or in the sea. Not many plants grow in sandy deserts or in marshy places. Now the biosphere. The part of the earth where living things are found that is called as the biosphere. The biosphere contains all the important substances which living things need. Like for example number one is water. Three quarters of the earth's surface is covered with water. It is contained in the oceans, ice caps, lakes and rivers. Living things need water because three quarters of the body is made up of water and any changes inside the body take place in the form of solution. Now another one is air. 
About one fifth of the air is a gas called oxygen. Living things take oxygen out of the air when they breathe. Breathing helps to produce energy for the body. A very small amount of the air is carbon dioxide gas. It is ad added to the air by burning wood and coal and also by the breathing of animals. Plants use carbon dioxide to make their food. Now another factor is light. The sun provides sunlight and energy for all living things. Plants use sunlight to make their food. Animals eat plants and so get energy indirectly from the plants. Now the minerals. The soil contains many minerals which help plants and animals to grow healthy and strong. Plants absorb minerals from soil from the soil through their roots. Animals get minerals by eating plants. Another factor is temperature. Plants and animals need to live in a particular temperature. If the surrounding become too hot or too cold, they may die. What do animals eat? Without plants, there would be no food in the world. Plants provide food for animals. Green plants can make their own food from the light energy of the sun. The energy of the sun is stored in the sugar made by the green plants. Some of this energy is used by the plant itself. Some energy is stored in the plants, but most of the energy is lost. When an animal feeds on plants, it eats the stored energy and so energy passes from plants to animals. Now comes to the herbivores. Some animals eat only plants. So these animals are called herbivores. They have special teeth which help them to chew leaves and grass. Rabbits, cows, sheep, horses, zebras and camels are examples of herbivores. This is a horse and rabbit and a zebra. So these are the pictures. Now the carnivores. Some animals eat only the meat or flesh of other animals. These animals are called carnivores. They have special teeth and sharp claws that help them to grip and tear the flesh of animals. The lion and tiger, uh, lions and tigers are the examples of the carnivores as it is in the picture. Now the omnivores. Human beings and some animals and, uh, and birds eat both plants and animals. They are called omnivores. Bears, hens and crows are example of the omnivores. Energy for living things. All living things need, need energy and they obtain this energy from the food. Green plants are called producers because they make their own food and they use sunlight to make food by a process called photosynthesis. Animals and humans cannot make their own food. They are called consumers because they obtain energy from the plants by eating them. Many small organisms such as bacteria and fungi feed on dead plants and animals. They release the chemicals from the dead organisms into the soil and so help to keep the soil fertile. These micro microscopic organisms are called decomposers. Now food chain. Food energy passes from plants to animals in the form of a long chain which is called a food chain. Photosynthesis in green plants change the sun's energy to energy stored in the food. Energy flows from the sun to plants, the producers, then to Plants eating animals, the herbivores, and then to flesh eating animals, the carnivores. This energy flows from a food chain. For example, sun, plants, aphids, ladybirds, and the robin. This is an example of a food chain. Now the food web. Different food chains are not separate from each other. Consumers often eat more than one kind of food, so and so several food chains are connected to form a food web. For example, study the food web on the right. This is a food web example given to you. Adaptation. All living things grow and change. When an animal or plant changes to fit its surroundings, we say it has adapted to its surrounding. The special body parts that a plant or animal develops to adapt to a particular place or living conditions are called adaptation. Adaptation in animals now. Each animal is fitted or adapted to live in its surrounding or environment, is adapted to find food, it is protected uh, from the heat and cold, it is protected from its enemies. Some animals have special body parts for protection. A tiger has sharp claws and teeth for tearing flesh, a deer has horns for fighting, a tortoise hides in its hard shell, a mountain goat has hoofs for climbing rocks, an eagle has a sharp beak and claws for catching mice and rabbits. These in the pictures, these animals are given to you and their adaptations to adapt an environment. An agenda has sharp needles, a comedian changes color so that it can blend in, in with its surroundings. The folded wings of a leaf insects look just like a leaf. A bird has wings to fly. A fish swims in water with its fins and tails. Bees webs and ants have poisonous stings. Animals have special body parts to find food. The beak of a human bird is adapted for taking nectar from the deep inside a flower. A pelican has a large beak with a pouch to store fish. These are the animals that are given to you. A mosquito's mouth is shaped like a needle to stab the stem of a stem plant or the skin of an animal. A tiger has strong legs to run after other animals and it uses strong claws and teeth to catch the eat and eat other animals. This is an anteater, this is a tiger. The giant anteater uses strong claws to open the nest of ants and termites. Its long sticky tongue picks up the insects it eats. 
Now animals that live in very cold places, animals that live in very cold places like polar bear seals and whales have thick fur on their bodies. They have a thick layer of fat under their skin as well which also keeps them warm. This is a seal, this is a polar bear. Animals that live in very hot, hot places, most animals that live in very hot places like camel, lizard and snakes rest during the day and look for food at night. They can store water in their bodies for a long time. They can close their nostrils to keep out sun. These are the examples of snake and camel of dry place animals. Plants are fitted, fitted to live in their surroundings. Plants that grow in very cool places have needle-like leaves. They make seeds inside the cone. Plants that grow in very hot places have thick fleshy stems which can store water. Their leaves are very tiny. They have very deep roots. They have hard waxy coats and thorns for protection. Plants and trees that grow in forests have broad leaves that fall off in winter. Some plants have a sticky juice or a strong smell so that animals may not eat them. Okay students, now come towards the book exercise. The question is, answer the given questions. Question number one is, why are plants so important to life on earth? Why are plants so important to life on earth? It is very easy. You can write the answer that plants are very important for life on earth as it gives oxygen to the air which animals or other living things can breathe during their breathing. Another point is plants provide food for the living things. As we have discussed in the food chain and food web, so it provides food to the living things. Another one is it provides shelter or shade to different types of animals. Like for example, the birds, they are living in the nest on the trees. So it uh, provides shelter or shade to different animals. Question number two is, explain how the energy of the sun is passed on to animals. So the an answer is the energy of the sun is passed on to the animals by the food chain. Energy flows from sun to plants, plants are producers, to plants eating animals, herbivores, then to flesh eating animals, carnivores, and this energy flows and uh, in the form of the food chain. Okay students with this question you can draw the diagram of any food chain. Okay. Then is the question is what does the food chain show? So the answer is the food chain shows the passage of energy from sun to different plants and animals. Then is the question what happens to the dead plants and animals in the soil? So the dead plants and animals are broken down by the bacteria and fungi. They are called as decomposers. Okay, the next question is what are adaptation? So the special body parts which an animal or plant has developed to fit in its surrounding that is called adaptation. You can give the example of any animal adaptation. Then the question is how are animals that live in very cool places adapted to live there? So the animals that live in very cool places they have thick fur on their bodies and they have very thick layer of fats under their skin. So this is the answer of this question. Now on page number 41 there is a question describe three ways in which plants have adapted to their surrounding. So first you will get the heading of three ways of plants adaptation. So number one is plants grow in cold places. Plants that are growing in cold places have thin needle like leaves. Another one adaptation is plants that grow in hot places they have fleshy stem to store the water. And another adaptation is that some plants have sticky juice or strong smell so that animals may not eat them. So these were all about the question answers. Now come towards the homework. The you people have to do question number 234 of book page number 40 and 41 on your in your neat notebooks. So this was all about your book exercise. Thank you.